Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be a part of this here program? Happy to have you. I'm going to start this hour with phone calls, and we're going to be a little more flexible on calls today uh, because of the day. And I've been gone last week and making it up to you this week. So I'm going to start this hour uh, with a great question from Rooster. How are you? Ready for the weekend? Uh, I'm actually going to be working this weekend, so I don't oh, get the weekend sucks. off. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you make the money. You, you that's how you provide for your family. You work. That that's uh, true. That's true. I've got I've got two questions for you. I'll ask the really easy one first. So, so that I can ask the second one and get off the phone. Um, the first question is, where do you find these really cool songs like Black Beto? Where can <laughs> uh, I get Honestly, uh, so I came up with the idea. I thought, you know, I, I kept referring to Stacey Abrams as um, Black Beto. And I was like, wait a second. We should t- take like Black Betty and turn it into Black Beto. And then Charlie has a friend who's a genius at this stuff. So I kind of came up with the general ideas and some of the lines. And Charlie worked it up, made it a little better, and sent it to his friend who sent it back to us. And like the very first iteration of it was perfect. I want to know how I get it get my hands on that. Because I've heard it one time on the radio. And I'm like, holy cow, that's hilarious. <laughs> I need to show this to my wife. Well, so uh, uh, unfortunately, kind of you got to listen to the show for it, and I'll I'll play it more often like that. And, and so the other one was was the woke hymns um, that that I came oh, up yeah. with after all the 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 woke stuff um, uh, that that you know some of these these churches now they're they're getting rid of gendered language. So Jesus loves mm-hmm. me, this z no, and and all that. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I love the uh, Jesus loves all the little children, red and yellow, black, not white. <laughs> anyway uh eric my real question is what do these big donors get out of donating to a politician in a totally different state has no reference so like somebody in california they got six million dollars why would they donate to one somebody in a totally different state that's not even a, a national polit- politic and second of all that they kind of have a clue they're not going to win anyway what would they get uh, out of that? Oh, if, a couple of things. One, uh, large donors with money to spend like to spread it around the country because they're they're not helping Abrams per se. They're helping the Democrats, and it's team sport. Um, and so they're doing that. Um, they actually, many of them think she can win. Uh, the national press has pushed a narrative so hard that Abrams is a viable candidate uh, that these people think they can. It, it, like, uh, what's her name? Oh, Amy McGrath. She was the terrible candidate in Kentucky who ran against Mitch McConnell. And the Democrats were absolutely convinced she could beat McConnell. Uh, and she couldn't, but they became convinced she could because Democratic pollsters put out polls that showed the race very close. And so they uh, decided to give her money. Or Jamie Harrison in South Carolina is another great example. Jamie Harrison, Democratic candidate, ran against Lindsey Graham. Repeated polling showed it close. Democrat, Republicans own polling, I got to tell you, did show it close. Turns out all the polls were that bad uh, two years ago. And, I mean, those who knew South Carolina knew Graham, it might be closer than he wanted, but he wasn't going to lose. But, man, the polling showed it was close, and Democrats flooded money, and we're going to take out Lindsey Graham. We're going to take out Lindsey Graham. We're going to take out Mitch McConnell in Kentucky. And, and they just bought it. They're perfectly willing to have bad pollsters give them bad information and write checks because it's team sport for them. Uh, I live in Georgia. I am an owner of the Green Bay Packers. I got Packers stuff in my house. Uh, I am, yes, I'm one of the owners of the Green Bay Packers. Um, and my dad and I both own part of the Green Bay Packers. And I got Packers stuff in Georgia, uh, even though the Hawks are here. And it's same, it's team sport for Democrats. Democrats, they're not into, into sports ball. They're into politics. And so they will fund the Democratic Party because that's their campaign team. That's their, that's their sports team. And so they'll do that. 
Um, it's just, it's what they do. Now, speaking of the Democrats and the left, let's talk for a moment, please, about Woko Haram. There is a terrorist group in Nigeria called Boko Haram. They're an awful terrorist group. They kidnap people. They destroy families. They, they kill people. I have started calling the wokes Woko Haram, the hardcore wokes who want to come after people, destroy people's lives, drive them from jobs, cancel them, destroy them. They, they don't kill them yet, but it's only a matter of time. I mean, look, look at this situation with Lee Zeldin up in uh, in New York, Lee Zeldin, Republican candidate for governor, he's also a sitting congressman, had a guy jump on stage with a sharp object attempting to kill Lee Zeldin yesterday, he attempted to assassinate a candidate for governor in New York. And the Democrats in New York have collaborated so much with the violent criminals that the guy is not in jail. They arrested him and let him out of prison. Lee Zeldin has an amazing campaign ad uh, on crime that he can start running, that uh, Kathy Huschel, the governor there, was outraged by it, condemned it, said she was glad he was okay, but it was her policies, and before her, Andrew Cuomo's policies, the policies of the Democratic Party that let the would-be assassin out of jail. Woko Haram is running amok. In Minnesota, Dave Chappelle was going to do a comedy show. And the venue, it was a sold-out show. It was going to be held at First Avenue. First Avenue is the venue, if you ever saw Prince's 1984 movie, Purple Rain, very famous avenue. Uh, Chappelle's a big Prince fan. He was going to have his stand-up routine at First Avenue. A few hours before the event, First Avenue canceled the event. They have a statement. They said, to staff, artists, and our community, we hear you and we are sorry. We know we must hold ourselves to the highest standards and we know we let you down. We are not just a black box with people in it. And we understand that First Avenue is not just a room, but meaningful beyond our walls. The First Avenue team and you have worked hard to make our venues the safest spaces in the country. And we will continue with that mission. We believe in diverse voices and the freedom of artistic expression. But in honoring that, we lost sight of the impact this would have. We know there are some who will not agree with this decision. You are welcome to send feedback. Now, Chappelle's show was held at a venue across town. By the way, it's worth noting that uh, CNN left all of that out. I just read you the report from CNN and, and they left all that out. He is, he was moved to the varsity theater. This is, this is, this is striking to me. You have a successful black man who has made jokes about white men becoming women. And the white men who have become women have used their fear power to bully an artistic venue into shoving the black man off stage. Comedy is not supposed to be a safe space. Comedy isn't supposed to be a safe space, but the wokes, Woko Haram, terrified this venue into throwing a black man off stage because all the white people were upset. How is this not racism? How is it that the trans community, which represents less than uh, 1% of this country, has enough clout to throw a black man off stage and try to shut him up? By the way, uh, a lot of comedians have come out and condemned it. Uh, Laugh Factory owner Jamie Masada told Fox News that the comic stage is a sanctuary. We've got to protect the First Amendment. We can't dilute it. We've got to be able to laugh at ourselves. A trans comedian, Flame Monroe, condemned 
them for doing this. It's a bunch of white people who were protested. You don't actually see a lot of of, uh, non-white protesters protesting Dave Chappelle. It's a bunch of white people protesting Dave Chappelle. They have tried to silence Dave Chappelle, who is the funniest comedian on planet Earth, who laughs at everybody, by the way. He's made jokes about the transgender community. He's made jokes about the white community. He's made jokes about the straight community. He's made jokes about the gay community. He's made jokes about the black community. He's never attacked for using the N-word, but he's attacked for laughing about transgender people. He laughs about everybody. I have seen all of his stand-up routines. He genuinely is the funnest, funniest comic out there. Not, not for everybody. A lot of profane language there. But the wokes have come for Dave Chappelle. The wokes, a group of white people who believe they are entitled to control the conversation of community, are trying to silence a black man. Oh, but wait. It's worse moving beyond Dave Chappelle. Women Against Abuse is a nonprofit. They consider themselves fully inclusive, multicultural, and anti-racist. The organization says it is dedicated to serving all survivors. It offered to pay their BIPOC, yep, BIPOC, What is it? What does what BIPOC stand for? Brown, Indigenous, People of Color, or something like that? I can't remember. Uh, they keep coming up with these wackadoo names that no one uses outside of a faculty lounge, as James Carville says. But they decided to pay their BIPOC employees more than their white counterparts. And then get this. They encouraged black abuse victims to not call the police. And they started, they wanted to have an organizational event and started fighting amongst themselves over whether Jews should be invited or not because are Jews really persecuted or are they persecutor? Women Against Abuse was a liberal organization. The white people in charge of it are now actively encouraging black women who are abused not to call the police for their own good. Because the police are bad and racist, so don't call the police to protect you. My gosh, these people have lost their minds. And what it is, is a bunch of white people. The military itself is having problems. The army is having recruiting troubles. The army has gone so woke. You're now more likely to learn uh, about uh, how you got to accept transgenders and fight China. And they're turning on themselves. I mean, people don't want to sign up for the army anymore. They don't want to go into the the uh, BIPOC diversity episodes that the army makes you go through. You can't go through basic training now without first going through diversity training in the army. Nobody wants to put up with that crap. I mean, these people that they, they 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 run the culture. They are overwhelmingly white. And they're trying to tell black women for their own good who have been beat up by their spouses or their boyfriends, don't call the police. The police are racist. And these white people are trying to tell Dave Chappelle to get off stage. It is white people, overwhelmingly, who are in the transgender community. Overwhelmingly, it is a phenomenon of upper-income white secular people. The data is there for everybody to see. You don't have a bunch of, of you don't have the transgender phenomenon in third world countries. It's it's not a phenomenon in Asia. It is a phenomenon in Europe and North America among rich white people overwhelmingly. Or people in schools whose rich white people who become their teachers convince the kindergartners they're transgender. It is not a phenomenon of the ordinary middle class anywhere in the world, except in Europe and North America among the unchurched secular elite, white people who have silenced a black man in Minnesota for the audacity, the crime of making people laugh. Folks, the signature hymn sheets from Bowling Branch are a bestseller for a reason. They use the highest quality threads on earth for a superior softness, a better night's sleep, The sheets are made with threads so luxurious, three U.S. presidents love them. They feel 
buttery to the touch. They're super breathable. Now, here's the thing. I can tell you this from personal experience. Every time you wash the sheets, they get softer. You know, people worry about thread counts for sheets. You need to worry about the quality of the threads. Bowl and Branch uses fantastic ones. You can just feel them and they get softer and softer over time. They're very, very breathable for the summer, but they also have a good weight for the winter. They help you sleep well at night. They're not so light that you feel like nothing's on you. They they're, just, they're the perfect weight. They're the perfect sheet from Bolin Branch. You'll immediately feel the difference with their iconic signature sheets. Right now, get 20% off site-wide during the annual summer event happening now only at BolinBranch.com. It's their best offer of the year before the holidays, so you need to act now. That's Bolin Branch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D Branch.com for 20% off site-wide phenomenal deal with phenomenal product. I'm telling you, we use them in our house long before I was a broadcast reader. We use bowl and branch. You should too. bowl and for 20% off site wide. Hello there. Welcome back. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number eight, seven, seven, nine, seven, three, seven, four, two, five. We will get to your phone calls on the other side of this break. I promise right now. I need to tell you, if you text the word data, to 33777. I'm going to send you back two links. One is the Together for Truth Conference registration link. Uh, if you want to go to Atlanta, Georgia, the end of August and see Ted Cruz and others gather there, you can. Uh, but the big one is my daily email. I'm going to talk about this after we take phone calls. Um, I'm getting back in the conference game and I want to talk to you about that on the other side. But if you are a paid subscriber to my daily email, you're going to get 50% off the early bird uh, conference registration. Um, we're working out all the terms. It'll be later next year. We're reaching out to Mike Pence, Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis, Brian Kemp, Nikki Haley, Tom Cotton, Josh Hawley, Christy Nome, uh, Jim Roy, Jim Jordan, Steve Scalise, uh, Mike Lee, Marco Rubio, uh, uh, Rand Paul. We're just we're reaching out to a ton of people. Mike Pompeo inviting them to come spend some time in Atlanta uh, later next year to be with us on stage uh, talking about the future. Um, and it, paid subscribers get a huge discount out of the gate save you some money. We're running the math to make sure we can save you some money, even with your subscription to the Substack. Um, but you can text the word data to 33777 and subscribe. I'm going to talk more about that after I get through phone calls on the other side. Right now, just real quick, um, there's a story in the Washington Post about COVID dodgers. I may have had COVID. I've never had a symptom for COVID. I've never had symptoms. Uh, more and more people tell me, oh, you probably had it. Now that I've been vaccinated and boosted and all that, they can't really run the test to see if I've ever had it. But before that, I, I did the test. And after so many people had gotten it, so many people had um, that I know had been in close contact with, and I never got it. And the story in the Washington Post says eventually everybody's going to get it. It's kind of the point I was making to you yesterday. If the president of the United States in the cloistered world in which he lives is going to get COVID, we're all going to get it and we're all going to be okay. And we should probably stop treating it as anything other than a cold. In fact, COVID, though much more contagious now, is far less likely to cause you problems uh, what I find interesting, however, is the media wanting to know why, in fact, Biden's team isn't masking up. Listen to the juxtaposition here. Here's Dr. Jha at the White House. The president wears a mask, he's well protected, but he still got COVID. Is this the time to really realize that mask may not really be as effective as, you know, we try to make them to be? So I think the science on masks is actually quite clear, and there is broad agreement among public health and science experts that masks work. Higher quality masks work better than lower quality masks. He wears, every time the president wears masks, he wears high quality masks. Um, masks are uh, not a panacea, uh, and obviously uh, the president, uh, you know, um, it engages with people um, both indoors and outdoors. Uh, and. And there was never, I think, an understanding on our part that we could keep the president from uh, having zero chance of getting infected. Like he but there's a problem. Jill Biden has now been in public, and Jill isn't wearing one of those high-quality masks. First Lady Jill Biden attended an, a, an event in a school in, in Detroit earlier today, and you can see 
uh, from the pictures. Let's bring that up. She, she's uh, well, that's uh, that's Biden. That's not the, the video I'm talking about. Um, there she is. And she's she's wearing one of those kind of like cheap surgical masks that you get, you know, for free if you go to a CVS yeah. and they or someplace. She's not wearing an N95. I mean, there are much more intense masks. Looks like the guy next to her is wearing a cloth mask. Oh, right. right. I'm going from the picture. I could be wrong. <laughs> so where are the high quality masks everywhere? The Surgeon General says and Jill Biden isn't. No one at the White House is. Why should any of us? They're not working anymore, folks. All the data says they're not working anymore. Welcome back. It's Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. I'm going to spend some time on the phones. As I promised, I'm going to start with Michael. Welcome, Michael. How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. What's up, bud? Not a whole lot. What's going on? Not much. I just wanted to, it was pro- probably off topic from what you've been talking about. That's but all right. I thought it was crazy. I, I just thought it was crazy because I grew up in a Democrat household by because I was raised mostly by my grandparents, and it's hard it's hard to ex, like explain to them what's going on because they really only watch CNN, and it's hard for them to even get a wider perspective because they can't really use the internet. <laughs> and mm-hmm. they the because the Democrats used to be for the little guy. And now they're just slowly becoming more of like the elite and not hearing what the people are saying anymore. And it's just crazy how they just can't use common sense. You know, so it's funny you say this because there there is a lot of data out there that uh, younger people from traditional Democratic households are actually moving to the right and younger people from traditional Republican households are moving to the left. There, there's this great crossover, and it, a lot of it has to do with demographic upbringing, too, that if you were uh, middle class, lower middle class, or poor, uh, you're tending to move to the right, and if you're from a rich household, you're tending to move to the left because of social issues, uh, and, and middle class, lower income people are really concerned about economics and also cultural rot in society. And it just he, he, the signs are out there that this is happening and older generations of Americans who are so used to the, the dynamic of always the Republicans are the party of the rich and the Democrats are the party of the working class. They're totally missing this dynamic happening. Yes, and I understand that, too. And I think I think it's because people that grow up in a rich household, they they never know, like the struggle of anything. They don't know what anything's really worth. So they just can't, they can't, they just can't realize anything because they've had everything hand fed to them and they don't know how to work for anything. And it's not just working in school or anything like that. That takes hard work too. But if you've never had the opportunity to go out, you know, be with people, work with people, you're just not going to get that concept. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's it's. I'm glad you said that because I, I honestly I struggle with that with my kids because I mean we we live a very comfortable upper middle class existence. Um, my kids are 16 and 13. Uh, they they've never really had to go out and and get a job to work because I have enough money to be able to take care of them and and I don't want slacker kids. Frankly, I I want them to develop a work ethic and I sometimes wonder am I screwing them up by letting them live as comfortably as we live? Should I make them go out? Out there and and get a job or or do something and I I think that'll happen. My sixteen year old has a pretty strong work ethic already, but it, it concerns me. And I think we are seeing one of the big issues here is pampered kids who haven't had to develop a work ethic, and they're much more comfortable dealing with these contemporary social issues that the Democrats advocate for. But you get a kid out there who's had to scrape by, who's scrappy, who has a strong work ethic, and they get their first job. They're flipping burgers at McDonald's or they're serving sandwiches at Chick-fil-A, and suddenly they see the taxes come out on their paycheck, and they tend to flip out a little bit, and they become Republican. It's happening. Back to the phones. Bill, you're going to be up next. Welcome. Eric Dittos. Thank you. I'm just a dumb old contractor, but I can figure out the energy crisis thing. It'll take a little time, but not as long as it would for other things. We have an unlimited source of energy, the sun. 
solar panels are cheap and efficient, but the storage is what costs you. All the mining is counterproductive to make the batteries and all that. Electricity is what you use to do hydrolysis to convert water into hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen you can store. It's an excellent source of energy, and it's also, when it's burned, it's absolutely zero polluting. Build solar panels, build uh, plants to make hydrogen fuel. It's stored. You can store it. You can transport it. You can use it in com- internal combustion engines or use it for fuel. And that solves the problem, and you don't. You know, Bill, I'm glad you say that um, because I just think the future is hydrogen. Honestly, Um, I think we got a a temporary transition to more nuclear power in this country, but hydrogen has always made sense. Now, I realize there are problems. We don't want to wind up like the Hindenburg, but we've overcome a lot of those problems. There are hydrogen fuel cell cars I've encountered already out there uh, beyond cars powered by natural gas and you're right hydrogen uh burns clean um it just it makes a ton of sense to me that that's the direction we as a as a society would go and if there are worlds out there beyond our own i would imagine they've transitioned to hydrogen power now there are there are lots of steps along the way that we've got to get to hydrogen is highly explosive so when i was a kid uh, my team knows what's coming they're all about to roll their eyes collectively I was a massive chemistry nerd when I was a kid. I had this massive chemistry set. Other kids would save up their money to buy baseball cards and video games. Oh, I saved up my money to add to my chemistry set. Now, I lived in Dubai. And you could be a 10-year-old with a lot of money, and you could go buy the liter bottles of sulfuric acid and, and uh, zinc and hydrogen and, and the, the, the pressurized containers of hydrogen and oxygen and all that stuff. You, you do it. Nobody's going to stop you. My parents were like, hey, he's doing something productive. Maybe one day he'll be a chemist and make a lot of money. Nope. Uh, I, I liked the blowing stuff up. I didn't like the math part of it. But I would. I learned very quickly. I could take uh, hydrochloric acid and zinc, mix them together, and it would make zinc chloride and release hydrogen in the chemical reaction. And I could put a balloon over the flask and collect the hydrogen. As long as I was outside, my parents were okay with it. Put a candle on the end of a yardstick and hold it out to the balloon and boom, big old fireball. It was fantastic. I used to, you do with oxygen as well. If you mix hydrogen peroxide and potassium permanganate, potassium permanganate is a catalyst, causes the rapid release of the oxygen from the hydrogen peroxide, converts the H2O2 to H2O, releases the oxygen, and and you fill out the balloons and boom, it's just fantastic. Oh, it was so much fun. Oh, I used to love that. I would make bouquets of balloons and, and tie them all together like they were a big arrangement and then hold them up and stick a match and just watch this massive fireball spread out everywhere it was fantastic and then i grew up and moved back to the united states where 10 year olds weren't allowed to buy sulfuric acid it was very disappointing to move back to the united states hydrogen's very volatile and explosive but it's the most abundant element in the universe and it seems like instead of pouring money into windmills and solar panels we should be exploring the use of hydrogen to power our lives now Back to the phones. Barry, you're going to be up next. Welcome. Hey, buddy. How are you today? I'm good. How about yourself? Well, I'm uh, I'm all right for an ugly old fat man, but I want to talk to you about the <laughs> BIPOC. I'm actually a Native American, and nothing is more offensive to me than having some white woman tell me what should be offensive to me. Wait a second. Wait a second. You, you, wait, 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 wait. You're, 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 you say you're a Native American. Actually, man, I, I hate to correct you, but you're now called indigenous. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? I, I just find that uh, I just find it terribly offensive to have a white woman tell me what should be offensive to me because I don't know. I, my my skin is a little bit thicker than that, I believe. I, I would think so. It, it, the whole thing, this the whole BIPOC and people of color, I don't know anybody outside of politicians who refer to people of color. And, you know, I got to tell you, I actually don't know anyone outside of politicians who refer to brown people. Um, Neither do I. Hispanic, Latino, 
I, I know everybody says black people. Fewer and fewer people actually use African American. They've gone back to black. But uh, Hispanic, Latino, I don't know people outside of politics who say brown people. I wasn't even sure what a brown person was at first when they started saying it. I'm like, uh, are we now, are we going to go back to red, yellow, black, and white for denominators? I don't think so. Um, it just, it, it makes, it's, it's a world unto itself. And I got to tell you, I'm convinced they do this stuff to get the rest of us in trouble that will slip up and say something. And, and the, aha, gotcha. You, you're not up with the latest lingo. Well, as long as they can keep everyone afraid and angry, they have power. That's the, that's the whole crux of the situation. That's right. Uh, I got to tell you, and, and listen, Barry, I appreciate the phone call. Uh, you know, Dave Chappelle, in his last comedy, says, I'm done. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm done. I'm not going to laugh again. I'm not going to make jokes again about transgender people unless we're all laughing together. He's going to have to make some jokes. My gosh, I've saw, seen the Bill Burr uh, comedy sketch, and, and he's. I, I would say that the three best – uh, comedians out there right now in order. I think number one is absolutely 100% Dave Chappelle. Number two is Bill Burr. And number three is Nate Bergazzi. And, and I'm not as familiar with his work, but the stuff I've seen is fantastic. Um, but I absolutely think that those are probably the three best comedians in the market right now doing stand up. Bill Burr is hilarious. He, but he's no Dave Chappelle. And what makes Dave Chappelle such a genius is the art of his storytelling, the way he tells a story, the way it arcs around, the way it comes back in on itself for the punchline. It's it's really, as a, as a student of storytelling that I have to be in radio, watching Chappelle weave a story together that circles back on itself for the punchline that was there the whole time and you didn't even see it. Till he pointed it out to you that it's just it's genius it really is genius and the fact that a bunch of white people don't like him because he offended them a bunch of white men who now want to be white women it makes it even more hilarious to me back to the phones doug you're going to be up next welcome hi eric hi there uh, uh one comment on chemistry excursion my younger brother and i were the same way and if you want to make hydrogen easier, you need to have sulfuric acid, which at the time we could buy. This is back in the 60s. I just used aluminum foil. Maybe not as effective as zinc, but it did get the job done. That's true. And you know you can also take easy off oven cleaner and spray it on aluminum foil and ball it up, and you can watch that sucker burn. Yeah, the hydrogen peroxide, too, yeah. I mean, the yeah. uh, sodium hydroxide. Anyway, my question was, I live in Pensacola, Florida, and Matt Gates is my uh, congressman, and he does these phone forum things like once a month or something. And I try to get on there and I talked about the strategic oil reserves. And my question was, uh, right now Biden is pulling the oil out of the strategic oil reserves. And my thought at the time was he's doing that because he's just trying to get rid of the oil. He's not going to replace it. Formed by the call screener that they do have to legally replace it. And I right. remember reading an article some time ago when President Trump was in office that he replenish some of the oil in the strategic oil reserve. My question is, what does the law say? When do they have to replace it? If I mean, do they really have to replace it, or are they legally obligated to replace it? And I'll just let you comment. Oh, yeah, great question, Doug. Yes, they are legally obligated to replace it. They do it over time. There is a little bit of a nuance that gets caught up in the reporting, though. So the strategic petroleum reserve is filled with what's called sour crude. There are two types of crude oil. They're sweet crude and they're a sour crude. Nobody wants sour crude. The reason nobody wants sour crude is because sour crude is harder to refine. It has a higher sulfur content. So you can't refine sweet crude and sour crude at the same time in the same refinery. Sour crude takes longer to refine, but you can also buy it cheaper because nobody wants it. So uh, what will happen is that the Biden administration will, over time, buy sour crude that nobody wants to refine, expediting uh, the refining of the sweet crude. Now, the problem here and why Biden, to some degree, made the situation worse is because they decided to release the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, which has to be refined when it is released. And when they did so, they had to stop refining the sweet crude that everyone wants. They had to refine the sour crude that takes more time to refine, 
and get that on the market before they can go back to refining the sweet crude. So they'll be able to fill back up the strategic petroleum reserve over the next several months as people turn their nose up at sour crude and go back to sweet crude. They'll be able to get it at a discount because sour crude sells cheaper than sweet crude because nobody wants it. Um, and they'll be able to fill it up over time. The problem is it's not a whole lot cheaper. And so we will eventually have to pay for this. Frankly, part of them selling some of the oil reserves to China was to recruit some of the money at a profit to be able to buy back the oil reserves. You know, Trump sold uh, oil reserves of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to China as well. The difference was that Trump did it when it was $2.18 a gallon of gas, not when it was over $5 a gallon of gas. The media's others playing gotcha. Say, oh, Trump sold it to China too. Well, yeah, Two eighteen a gallon of gas as opposed to $5 a gallon of gas. It made sense to sell it. It didn't make sense this time to do it. But pay no attention to the facts. The media just wanted to try to play a gotcha game. I don't want to play a gotcha game with you. I get asked these questions all the time. Is Eden Pure legit? Uh, a lot of people are skeptical. You know, I try only to do business with and advertise uh, companies that I like to do business with. Makes it harder to fill in ads. As you can tell we, we're not a super ad heavy uh, show in large part because I don't want to do ads for a lot of companies I don't trust. I trust Eden Pure. And here's why I use it in my house. Uh, I use it not as a standard air purifier, leave it running, get the pollen, the mold, the mildew, the dust out of the air. Nope. I use it specifically to wipe out odors. If I have fried in the kitchen, we don't have an exhaust fin in the kitchen. I turn on the Eden Pure. It eliminates those odors. Don't have to use the essential oils. Our back porch sometimes gets a little musty smelling because it's kind of those one of those glassed in uh, back porches that originally was not glassed in. It can get a little musty back there. Run the Eden Pure. It wipes out that odor. If I'm in a rental car and someone's been smoking or had a pet in there, I can use the Eden Pure and it wipes out the odor. Or a hotel room. I, they're small. You can hold it in your hand. You can plug it into the wall or you can use a USB cord. And right now you can get three of them for less than $200 for your upstairs, your downstairs, your basement, your RV, spread them around as you need them. You can plug it into the wall, use a USB cord, and you get three of them for less than $200. You go to EdenPureDeals.com, EdenPureDeals.com, and you put in Eric3 on the front page. It'll ask you for a discount code. You put in E-R-I-C-K and the number three, no space, Eric3. You'll see the Eden Pure three pack. You get three of them for less than $200. You're saving $200. You get free shipping, EdenPureDeals.com, the discount code, Eric three. Welcome back. It's Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Real quick, Greg, I want to go to you before we hit into break. Got about a minute and a half. Hey, Eric, can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Great. I've always been a fan of yours for a long time. I used to carry you on Facebook and everything, but I'm going to get to it real quick. This is my synopsis. I feel as though that the powerful entity around the world is using different avenues to destroy us and divide us. And I believe that the LGBTQ, ZYX, whatever, and I have a gay son and I don't have a problem with that. I'm not anti-homosexual or anything in that order, but I just feel that they're attacking us with gun rights, the, the, liber, the libertarian rights, the homosexualism, and just, everything with Europe and us because we're the I, two most powerful countries in the world. I, I would say it's, it's it, to give it a name, it, it's, it's global progressivism and global progressivism actually does not want, as some people think, communism or socialism. What global progressivism wants is ruled by a technocratic class of elite people who share their left-wing values, who will pick winners and losers around the world based on those values, and will, in fact, uh, oppress the rest of us, put us into some form of indentured servitude where we are dependent on affirming their values in order to get anything done. We see this at the corporate level in the United States right now, Greg. We, we see this with corporations in America do not want to advertise on conservative radio or Fox News. Uh, they they want to elevate uh, voices of the progressive left. They want to fund them because ultimately the corporate world is run by a group of progressives who want a group of technocrats to favor them. What they loathe is the arm's length transactions of a free marketplace where you and I may choose to spend our money elsewhere. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? 
In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.